Forest Hills, an upper middle class enclave in the heart of Queens, New York, where more than 70,000 people live within two square miles. The neighborhood streets are busy, but PJ's restaurant is empty. That's me, that's me. Prior to opening the restaurant, Joe and Madeline were living a dream life. <laughs> when I first came to the States, I started working in construction, worked with my brother, PJ. PJ and I were very, very close. He really, truly taught me about life and be my own man. I lost my home for 20 years, worked as hard as I could to get my wife and kids, nice things, a nice house. We were going places. And then PJ passed away. Joe was a shell. Joe was just empty. I can't mention his name without feeling that hurt inside, you know? He didn't really know how to walk without that guy being around. He just meant everything to him. I just couldn't stand to see him in pain. And when this place came for rent, I said, go and get the key, and we'll, we'll just name it after PJ. Welcome to PJ. Which is even more special, because this was the bar that PJ owned. How you guys doing? You know what I know about running a high-end steakhouse? Apparently not much. I don't know why we're putting garlic on honey mustard. Joe, it's, it's a honey mustard garlic roasted salmon. That's what it's supposed to be on the menu. Really? Joe and Madeline, they're from a construction background, so they didn't really know what it was like to get into the restaurant industry. My steak just because it's flavorless. Red meat is red meat. I don't know what you would expect myself to do about that. It's a big problem, and the food's inconsistent. I'm a very good chef. People come here just for me. How's everything? That's terrible. I'm sorry. They love my food, and, and everything is great. It was raw. They didn't like the steak. Now I have to avoid two checks. I want this place to work so bad, but we don't know what we're doing wrong. Give me a cigarette right now. Give me a cigarette. I sunk almost $2 million in this restaurant. I see it dying in his shoes right now. The two insurances have to get paid this week. This restaurant, it's cost us it's our savings, our house, our cars, everything. 4000 that was so much money. That's it, I'm going to drink it. Come here. Go and drink it, you've been doing that all day. Joe sits and drink glasses of wine and watch television when there is a million things going wrong here. And he's just basically feeling sorry if the problems aren't addressed. We'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. PJ Steakhouse. It looks great from the outside. There must be trouble on the inside. Wow. This is beautiful. Unbelievable. Wow. Anybody here? My goodness me. No one at the front desk. <sighs> Hello? So, a customer or? Mr. Ramsey, no, I'm the owner. You're the owner? Ah, huh? right. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Pleasure to see you. Um, good to see you too. Didn't expect to see you uh, at the bar. You've got no one at the front desk there. I see that, yeah. As soon as Chef Ramsey showed up, panic set in, and I started getting the butterflies. We're pretty slow this time of day, so. Slow. Is that normal? It is normal for lunch, yeah. Right. Hello. It's my wife, Milo. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Me too. Oh, Eric. Eric, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm not intimidated by Gordon. We're here to get a job done, and we better do the job the best we can. And if he can help us, great. If he can't, then he will fuck himself. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm happy to be here. Um, somewhat, uh, yeah, taken back by walking in and having seen how beautiful this place is. What's wrong with it? I'm not uh, restaurant material, I found out. Uh -huh. I'm a contractor who uh, jumped into this, who thought I'd get great managers, good floor people, I'd sit back and have a couple of wines at the bar. And I wish opening restaurants were that easy, Joe. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh. You know, I'm learning as I go. It can put you in a hole real fast, a restaurant. I don't know where to go, you know? Okay. Well, I've just arrived. Yeah, I'm starving. I'm going to have some lunch, and then we'll talk after, you. Yeah? yeah, I want to cook him a great meal. And I'm going to let them find other problems in the restaurant besides mine, because I don't think mine's a problem. Oh, dear. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. So, steakhouse. Oh, dear. No porterhouse, no New York, no rump. There's only two cuts of steak. Two steaks on the menu in a steakhouse. It should be minimum eight to ten. 
How are you? Welcome to PJ's. My name is Colin. Farrell, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for Good joining us. So I'll start with crab cakes, then maybe the shrimp and roasted garlic ravioli, and then I'll have the filet mignon with the uh, gorgonzola demi glace. All right, I'll go put this in for you. Thank you, Colin. No problem. I know Eric's a good chef, so what's to be nervous about? What do you order? Crab cakes plus filet mignon with gorgonzola medium rare and a shrimp ravioli. Right down. I just love what I do. This is perfect. My food is good, and if he critiques it like I've seen him critique other people's food, I'm going to probably throw it at him. <laughs> what is that? The crab cake. Somebody spit on my plate? What is that on there? That's coolie mango sauce. Oh, coolie mango. Thank you. Is that something out of the modern art museum? Splat. OK. Wow. That's fucking disgusting. He's rancid. Plastic bits of crap running through the crab cakes. Is everything OK? Uh, yeah, the chef sent out a little surprise. I've got bits of plastic running through there. See the plastic? I don't know where it came from, but it's definitely in there. But I I'm done with that. Thanks. OK. Severe warning for what's to come. Eric, you found a piece of plastic in there. Where's that from? I don't know, man. Fuck him. I have no idea where that plastic came from. Just happened to appear. I don't even have a place to get my kids out. The owner sat at the bar watching television, and they wondering why they're not doing well. Hi. Is that Joe's seat there at the end? Yes. All the time. He'll sit there most of the night. Oh, dear. Joe does need to get off his ass and start paying attention. Oh, here's my food. Fantastic. Let me, let me leave you alone to eat, right? Madeline, thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So. Oof. How'd you like the steak? Um, quite tough. Are they always served with raw onions, or? Yeah. Nah. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, you said the beef's a little tough. Just fucking get out of here. There's nothing positive being said. I don't really suck that bad, you know? Go oh dear. That looks like the biggest pile of shit ever to be served in Queens. My god. The raviolis are disgusting. Tart, tannin, and just a mouthful of acidic, thick, rich, creamy sauce that tastes like there's a buzz in your mouth. It just seemed like Chef Ramsay didn't like anything. Excuse me. Oh, God. Oh, dear. This is really bad. I can really start to understand to why Queens is running as fast as it can from PJ's. Disgusted by the food in this beautiful restaurant, Chef Ramsay heads to the problem area, the kitchen. Did you cook everything? Yeah. That was pretty fucking embarrassing. 100% pissed me off that Chef Ramsay didn't enjoy my meal. What's with the coolie? Is that something out of the modern art museum? Splat. Where's that from? From a can. From a can. Disgusting. The steak fillet should melt in your mouth, and it did nothing of the sort. That's what we could afford. Eric, come around so I can talk to you properly. I was shocked. I really thought that Eric's food was a lot better than what Chef Ramsay said it was. The food was shit. I get a lot of compliments, man. A lot. A lot of compliments from where? The place is fucking empty. Who's running the place? For the most part, I am. Oh, please. First of all, I'm here every day. You're not here every day. I'm not here enough to mother him, but I am here. He should be here, but he's not doing it. If you're here really overseeing everything, then these problems aren't going to be here. Get your ass off the bar stool and stand in here and do it every single night. Can you motivate yourself to want to keep the restaurant open? I don't know. But he's given up. I see that myself, yeah. I've given up. Guys, I'm fucking sorry, but take one good look at yourselves first. If there's one thing that has to change, it's people's attitude around here. Whether you like it or not, you are restaurateurs. You have the fucking responsibility of making this place work. Yep. But there's too many people turning their back on things that are wrong. I've got to get some fresh air. What a shame. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing here. Just a big disaster. Are we opening for dinner? After a miserable lunch, 
Gordon takes time to sit down with the one person who appears to have not given up, Joe's wife, Madeline. The word PJ, where does that come from? Joe's brother. Joe's brother. Joe's brother owned an Irish bar restaurant here 10 years ago, and he died when it was at its peak. He died? How close were they? They were best friend, and he was very sad. He was empty. Right. I was worried for his welfare. I was worried. And when this place came for rent, he came home and told me about it. So I told him, you know, get the key, and we'll put his brother's name back over the door. And he spent all the money, but uh, it helped him. It's getting to him now, just the money. And, and I think that's why he's at that bar having drinks, because he's looking around. He is embarrassed at how this turned out. And how much did he spend? 1.2 million to build it. What does it need to take per week to break even? About 17 to 18,000. What's it currently running at now? Four. Four thousand. Four thousand dollars. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, take me back. Joe was very successful before he opened the yes. restaurant. Yeah. In construction. Yes. And and where were you living at the time when it was? When successful? we were successful. Yeah. I designed a house. It was incredible. So you designed your dream house. Yes. But we sold it. You sold the house to keep the business open. Yes. We got rid of everything to stay here. But this restaurant did more for me than my house. It, it brought my husband back. How do you, how do you walk away from that? I, well, I can't. This is unbelievable. Well, that's helped me to understand uh, the background. As much as it has cost us to, to keep this place opened, at the same time, it gave us back Joe. And we just can't let it go. We'll do whatever we have to do to keep this place going. After his chat with Madeline, Gordon has a better understanding of what PJ means to this family. Now he wants to learn more about how the business operates, and there's no better way to do that than watching a dinner service. Hi, good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Thank you. Can I take your coat? Oh, I'm actually real comfortable. You have to leave it here. Okay, can I take these two? As is the case with many of the restaurants that Chef Ramsay visits, the word has spread in the community, and PJ's is much busier than normal. Hmm. I'm not used to being the hostess. How would you like that cooked? How well, please. Well done. Ordering a salmon. Well. I just know what's good, and I know what's bad, and I know I can handle the job, I know I can do the job really well, because my food is good. How are the stuffed mushrooms coming? Talk to me for two seconds. He literally doesn't talk behind the line. He doesn't communicate with me, especially when it's busy. The worst situation in the fucking world. Harry. Yes, sir. I've got to talk to them. Come on. At least talk. Cool. Right. What table is this? That's a fuck up, Warren. Eric's lack of communication has the staff waiting for direction and the diners waiting for food. Customers normally wait this long for entrees? Yes. Yeah. It usually takes two hours to eat here. From two hours? Two hours from start to finish. Oh. Eric, they're starting to complain now that there's no food out there. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than this, can't you? You give a shit? Yeah, I give a shit. Come on then, big man. This is a steakhouse, yes? PJ Steakhouse. PJ Steakhouse. Yeah. Pathetic joke. That's what it stands for. Come on, guys. Nobody looks too happy here. I know we haven't got our meals yet. Here we come. Didn't get your dinner yet? No. Okay. For the amount of people we had tonight, it was a ridiculous amount of time they had to wait for the food. That's it. I'm going to drink it. Eric, how long on that 16? Putting it up right now. An hour into dinner service, food is finally leaving the kitchen. Because of the amount of customers, everyone is delivering the food. Even Madeline, Gorgonzola. who is clearly not comfortable with the job. All right. Uh, you have this bit of listen. <laughs> uh, let's go over this, OK? Not a waitress, not a hostess. I only own it. So I know nothing about the food. I am probably the only person who owns a restaurant in the world who wouldn't know what good food is. That's the truth. I, I left that part up to Joe from the beginning. Give me a glass of shiraz. 
It's an hour and a half into dinner service. Table 30, all the apps are in the window. Many customers have received food. This is like really weird. But for most, it wasn't worth the wait. It's really gross. You don't like it? Lemonade. Lemonade. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'll tell the chef about the chicken. Can you take this off the table, Freddy? Why? You can tell if she didn't like it at all. And what do you want me to do with it? You know what I'm saying? Can we take it off? I'll have a word with them. I went to check the menu. It's chicken Madeira, and I will have them take it off for you. Well, do you didn't even recognize it? <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank you. Don't want to make Thank you. I just don't know how to have better manners at the table. How long on 23? Salmon and the filet. That salmon's fucked. Come on, guys. Eric, touch the top of that salmon. It's like a bullet. Yeah, it's too over that. It's only going to come back. Chef Ramsay is standing there and catching the mistakes as they're happening. Look at the crap underneath there. Look at that. Eric, that's well done. Everything just feels like it's turning downward. Touch that there. Yeah, that's not medium. It's a disaster. It was horrible to watch it just fall apart. Come on! No, I can't. It's too much for me. Fucking hell. With a restaurant full of unhappy customers... The chicken is chewing. ...and a kitchen falling apart... Look at that. Harry, that's well done. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the dinner service and heads to the storage area to see what problems lie below. What's that in there? Stuck to the cardboard box. No one gives a shit about. Look. Oh. Oh my god. Look at that. Ah. Oh. What is that? No. No. Oh. That just sums up the whole restaurant. Fading away, rotten, and just one big fucking embarrassment. Ah. Chef Ramsay knows that tonight's dinner service was not lost on Joe and Madeline. Thank you. But he wants to make sure they have a complete picture of the state of the restaurant. Ay, ay, ay. This is so hard, you know that. I've just come to the conclusion that no one gives a fuck. Stay there. When Chef Ramsay walked in that box, I was terrified. This is the big kick in the bollocks. Oh. I'm not here for this. We're using horrible plastic lemon juice in a sauce that a customer complained about, the fact that it tasted of lemon. We've got fresh lemons downstairs that have gone rotten. I just can't believe it. If it was me, I'd be down with a, with a, with a toothbrush. Here's the killer blow for me, just that one there. Dealing with the restaurant and the food and the customers, one thing. But where the fuck do you start with that? It was beyond bad. It's such a lack of pride. It's such a lack of caring. Who knows what the fuck goes on behind our back? I don't know. It is your job to go in that walk-in box and rotate your stock and clean it out. And it's part of our job to make sure he does it. Why should I have to fucking worry about this shit? Is it your business? You can't stand there and be silent anymore, eh? You can't do that. It seems like the whole blame of this whole place is coming down on my shoulders, and it's not all my fault. I'm not the fucking problem here. We're slopping it out, guys. Just get a bag and, and throw it out. I can't believe that shit, can you? How in the name of God? Imagine the waste of food. We're worse to blame, Joe. I had no idea what was in there. I'm very disappointed with Eric. I realized tonight that a lot of the problems in the kitchen is Eric. Definitely a change has to come. The bottom line is nobody around here wants to work. Nobody. Undeterred by a rough day one, Chef Ramsay hits the streets of Forest Hills, armed with a camcorder 
to do some grassroots research on what people really think of PJ's Steakhouse. Yeah, have we got two seconds? Sure. PJ's the Steakhouse. Have you heard of it? Have you been there? I have. It was not a pleasant experience. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. Have you heard of PJ's? Yes. Describe the dinner. Slow, cold, not too good, wouldn't go back. This is incredible. Thank, Thank you. you so much. After hearing what the neighborhood had to say, Chef Ramsay calls the owners and staff to a local theater. Take a seat. We're in this movie theater, and we have absolutely no idea what we're doing there. This is a serious world premiere, and the movie's entitled PJ's, The Word on the Street. Oh, gosh. I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm scared to see what's going to happen. Lights, please. Have you ever been to PJ's? PJ's? I've been there quite often, actually. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. This is incredible. The same shit went on six months ago that I saw last night. How was dinner? Atrocious. Really? That My bad? My son's steak was a hockey puck. I actually recognized two of the customers that was on that tape, and I said, holy shit. I ordered salmon. I got flounder. That's ridiculous. How many people have you told in the last six months not to go there? There's 66 apartments in my building. And you told them all not to go? Yes. It's total bullshit. I wanted to turn around and smack Eric in the mouth. That's how, that's how angry he was. He's behind us, munching on popcorn, but he's grinning his face. What was the food like? Awful. Really? Everything was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible? Yeah, steak chewy, not too flavorful. If you had the chance to change, what would it be? Better food. Better food. That is from the people on the street, and these people are going to keep that place open. My God. I was disgusted with the little movie thing we just saw. I don't believe it's all that true, you know? It's not that bad. Why do you find it funny? We're sat here in an embarrassing situation. It's definitely nothing to laugh about, Eric. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe all of it. It infuriates me. If the food was good, the same was excellent. We have got to start turning this around. Can this restaurant survive with Eric run the kitchen? Devastated but informed by what they heard at the theater, the owners have a clear picture of how PJ's was perceived by the town. But Chef Ramsay has more. Um, there's one big issue. Eric, there's nothing worse than having a chef in the kitchen trying to produce mediocre food. I'm telling you, the engine room is fucked. And if that's not working, nothing's going to work. This business cannot go any further forward with a liability like that. It's just gone to a stage where he should have been gone a long time ago. You realize you're both at fault. Absolutely. Because you're accepting and tolerating yes. the incompetence. And he's taking advantage of your weakness by yes. becoming worse at what he's paid to do. I would like to give him a last chance tonight. I'm going to put him on the spot. I'm going to call it as I say it. Get a grip. Cook your ass off. Or game over for me. Yeah, sounds great. Tonight will be Eric's last chance to save his job. So Chef Ramsay has made a few menu changes to help the kitchen keep up. OK, tonight, we have to start building a reputation up. So we're going to offer a mixed grill. We've got the amazing thighs of chicken, steak, beautifully done on the broiler, a little mini slider, tomato, roasted, lamb sausage, sautéed mushrooms, fries and onion rings. Introducing a mixed grill to say thank you to the neighborhood and welcome back and, and give us a shot. Such a brilliant idea. That is our special this evening. I know not one steakhouse this evening anywhere in Queens is serving a beautiful mixed grill. I love it. You don't get that anywhere. That's great. Eric, anything on there you can't do? No, I can do it all. You can do it all? OK, I need Eric, Madeline, and Joe two seconds, please, yes? This is what I do. Let me do what I do. OK. Eric, one thing I need to see is the timing. The timing has to be absolutely spot on. Tonight's your night. You have to show me that. You have to fucking show me. It's time for Eric to step up to the plate tonight, or there's no room for him here. OK, you're the owners. Who's running it tonight? I am. What are you doing tonight? Salads. Salads. I don't want to see you anywhere near the fucking bar. Run it. Run it, run it, run it. OK? Let's go. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Table four? Yeah. yeah. Follow me. We have our grill for two tonight. Have fun, please. Smile a lot. Smile. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. 
called our PJ's Mixed Grill. It has a flank steak on it. It has lamb sausage. Comes with grilled chicken. With that's your flank steak right there. Would you like to start out with one of those? Yeah. So what can I get you tonight? Mixed Grill. Mixed Grill special. Thank you. Thanks. This is unbelievable. Already there's a renewed energy going on, and this mixed grill has got them sort of excited, but I know it's early days. However, the big pressure is on Eric and Madeline. She has to run a business, and he has to be consistent in the kitchen. Otherwise, it's fucking history. A strip, a half rack, two fillet. You got a tomato and much salad, Joe. We got a rock tonight. You ready, bro? It's nice to see my husband off the bar stool, on his feet, and back to work. You just have an order? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Eric, when we start to send the mixed grill, what I want to do is see half the table in the window without the other half coming at the same time. Yes, Chef. Excellent, thank you. It makes me feel confident when I can hear a chef's voice behind me. You know that? Yes, Chef. Joe, I'm ready for that tomato mozzarella. Tomato mozzarella. Steak medium. Slider. Just That's lettuce it. and tomato. I need to pick up over here at PJ's Mixed Grill. With Joe and Eric working together, Food is leaving the kitchen at a good pace. Here we are. And now, the first mixed grill special is hitting the table. When the first mixed grill started to go out, you know, you could see people in the dining room looking over and getting excited. How's everything look? It's really cold. Everything's cold? This is cold and this is cold. All right, I'm sorry about that. That steak is so great. I'll be right back. I'm fucking believable. Mushrooms are cold, sausage is cold. It's That's supposed it? to be medium. Oh, come on. Eric, it's the first one. It's the first fucking table. Come on, Eric, please, yeah? Don't let me down, yes? Pick up on that PJ's Mixed Grill. Ordering a salmon. We got a PJ's Mixed Grill. We got a calamari first. The Mixed Grill special is extremely popular, with 21 orders already taken. I need to pick up over here at table 12. The kitchen has pushed out 14 of them in a hurry. Thank you. Now it's time to find out if Chef Ramsay's dish, cooked by Eric, is satisfying the customers. How is everything? I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry. It's freezing cold. And it was raw. Some pinkishness in the chicken. I will be right back, okay? Is everything okay? It's ice cold and. All right, I'm, I'm very sorry. sorry about that. I'll take it right back. Can you change that for like the fillet uh, or something? He doesn't like it. Okay. It's just dry. I'll be right back. What's wrong with it? it? Needs to be. He said it's cold. Oh, oh come on. Madeline, does that chicken look pink to you? Yeah, very. Much at one time, out. Everything's coming back. Uh, I'm so fucking lost, man. He hates it. Oh, come on. This is getting worse than last night. Eric couldn't cook a sausage. It, it was sad. What's going on here, guys? There's one simple fucking dish on there to make things look somewhat easier. Yeah, real fucking simple. Come there. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen it this bad. I don't care anymore. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It's an hour into dinner service, and with food coming back at a ridiculous rate... He hates it. Oh, come on. And Eric completely giving up... I don't care anymore. Chef Ramsay knows he is left with just one choice. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It was his last shot, and he didn't perform. It's a serious problem. No lie, our chef walked out. They're shutting down the kitchen. After shutting down dinner service, Chef Ramsay calls an emergency meeting with the owners. You cannot continue like this. I'm trying my best, and I cannot work with no tools in there. He's a cook, but he's not a chef. There's a lot of money invested here. And if I have to choose between a future and a chef, I have to choose the business. He needs to go. We need a new kitchen leader. It was a no-brainer. Please give me a real chef. I am willing to bring a chef in here and pay personally for that chef to help turn this business around for the first month. But that's your decision. You can't ask for more than that. You're the owners, and it's your call. See you in the morning. We had to make a quick decision. We couldn't let her linger on. We had to rip the band-aid off, you know? Come outside. At this point in time, if I don't do something, it's not going to be here at all. I can't lose a million dollars. You know what? I think it's all fucking bullshit. We should go whatever direction we have to go in. What you gotta do? That's all I can tell you. Do what you gotta do. We 
gotta move on, my friend. If my shit's not good enough, let him find somebody else, because I'm fucking done with it. It's time for a 360, you know? Getting rid of Eric, it was tough. But what's best for the restaurant is the way I'm gonna go. He's not the only thing that has to change here. He definitely is not the only thing. I need to get back on my feet and start paying attention to the business. And Joe does also. It's got to be becoming about keeping this place open and money. Joe and I need to keep this place going. Give it a golden opportunity. With Chef Eric now out of the picture, Chef Ramsay is ready to present his plan for the new PJs. How are we feeling? Great. It's been a tough week, yes? Time to put all that aside. This is not just a new chapter. This is a new book. Are you ready? Yes? The steakhouse has closed. PJ's Grill is now open. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Inviting, sumptuous, rich, is clear. PJ's Grill. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's perfect for the neighborhood. Right, should we go inside? Yeah. Yes? Let's go. The important part of keeping PJs, absolutely <gasps> crucial. Oh, my God, Joe. This area here is dedicated to him. Now it has a proper meaning. And more importantly, what a lovely tribute. It's beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye, you know? It's a good reminder of why this place is called PJ's. I feel PJ's presence here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madeline, Joe, two seconds. Want to introduce you to your new chef. This is Mark, Mark Hi. Elliott, Madeline, the owner. Lovely to meet you. And Mark. Joe, the owner. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited Good. to Mark have you. Likewise, Mark. I'm just so excited. I just can't wait to taste his food. I just can't wait to see the reaction of the customers. He knows his food inside out, and he knows how to cook. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story I'll explain later. <laughs> just having someone new and professional with ideas in this restaurant, it'll motivate and turn things around. With Joe and Madeline embracing Chef Ramsay's plan, right. he now introduces the new menu for PJ's Grill. Time for some dramatic change with the food. I'm excited about this part. This is the bit that really gets me fired up. Quick run through the menu, yes? Small, fresh, casual, and more importantly, fast. Irish stew, chicken scallopini, classic, OK? Steak Fred, we're a grill. So we've got the most amazing grill, the most amazing steak Fred. OK, happy? Good. Madeline, I need two seconds with you, please. Sure. Yeah? Come with me, my darling. Good. Excellent. There's one last change. What I need to see from you tonight, more than anything, is just walk with the customers. I want the burden off your shoulders tonight. And the only way around that, OK, was to bring in someone very special. And he's someone I trust with my restaurant. This man handles 250 staff a day. And he's here tonight to help you. Hello, Aaron. Hi, Tom Hi, Morning. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? Good. When you're worried about what's going to happen next or what to say next or how to handle that situation, there's your buffer. Don't be scared to ask questions and get out there with it. OK? All right. Chef Ramsay loans his manager to train me. Is this unbelievable? I only hope we perform with the faith he's given us, you know? Otherwise, that's the end of it. It's the big night, and this restaurant has been transformed in 24 hours from a steakhouse to a neighborhood grill. Even though Chef Ramsay has brought in a new chef. OK. Yeah, we chef. Feeling good. And his own manager. OK. Are we all set? PJ's fate still rests with Madeline and Joe. You know, it's a fantastic face and make him a nice smile. Just make sure we keep them talking and don't leave them kind of standing there staring at you. This is a huge night for PJ's because People are coming back here for the first time. They're going to sit down to hopefully a new Madeline and Joe. We need this launch to go well. Otherwise, you know, we'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. How are you guys doing? 
Yeah. Delighted yeah. to have you with us, okay? Enjoy your evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thirty minutes into dinner service, a surprise guest from the past shows up. Hi, good evening. How are you? Welcome to PJ's. I know you. Do you? I do. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago. I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. The service, terrible. If you have any problems, please ask for Madeline right away. Madeline. I was shocked that he's back for a surprise visit, and I hope that we won't disappoint him. Enjoy. Please. <laughs> this guy has a lot of negative feedback about the restaurant. Is this the young couple that just walked in, is it? Yes. Make sure Gordon and the chef know. Table 10. People might have eaten here before they were in your film, yep. actually. So previous customers, they complained last time they were here. So watch that ticket, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. Hi, how are you? I probably might recommend the mixed grill. The grill does look kind of interesting. We're going to try the uh, mixed grill. Thank you. All right, first order, stuffed mushrooms, house salad, house salad. Three of mixed grill. That's going to be the hit tonight, kids. So there are two different temperatures on one mixed grill. Yeah, Can I'm we... going to cut the steak in half and leave half of it in there a little bit longer. I love that flexibility. Music to my fucking ears. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How are we doing, guys? Very good. How's that stew? Good. You guys have to get this next time. We'll come back with this. This is awesome. With the kitchen functioning in a cohesive and professional manner. Isn't that good? Oh, that's good. Madeline, you won. Madeline is about to get her first of many lessons in proper management. Madeline. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? It's ridiculous. Cut it out. Don't go. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. That's it. That's your last break. I didn't get the break. I never left. OK, go chase your waiters. Let's find out. Come on. And it was following me everywhere. So we need to go find out the kitchen, what we have, what we don't have. There's no one there. Let's get back in. Let's check on this table four. I didn't realize how many places you had to be. OK, where are we going now with that? Uh... get a bus board. How was everything, guys? That was fine. Very good. Dinner service is off to a strong start. I'm going to find out what's happening with table 10. But the former customers, whose opinion signifies whether PJ's has really changed. Did you eat anything yet? Has yet to be served. You haven't been fed yet. I'll be right back. Before this critical customer walks out the door, Madeline must get her kitchen under control. Table 10, you haven't been fed yet. Dick, that actually went to table 9. Fucking hell. Who's sending food to the wrong tables, guys? Take care of it. Thank you, man. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, Jesus Christ, the mic. Table 10. We're just a little behind right now. OK, chef, they're starving. So they need something, and they need it now. Thank you, Mark. Let's go. Please take a breath. Take the pressure off. Don't worry. Working hard. Give me two minutes. You OK? Beautiful, baby. Flank steak, a slider, grilled chicken. Woo, that's beautiful. Yes. Come here, pick up. Mixed grill window. Let's not take this to the wrong table a second time, please. Really well handled with them. Really well handled in the kitchen. Thank you. Here we are. Hi, how are you? How's everything? It's really good now. I think it's going to be great. I hope this is going to be a place I can make more Thank you. They're happy with the new menu. They're happy with the food. He said he was definitely coming back. Oh, it makes me feel so good. So good. So please enjoy your dinner. Thank you. Everyone loves everything, man. Hey, you know what? It's all for you, Joe. <laughs> You're a different person when you have confidence in your chef. Everybody is rocking and rolling. Nice job across the board. I was actually very proud to be uh, owner of PJ's Grill. Chef Ramsay's vision of PJ's Grill was realized. How'd you feel? Great. It was a team effort that was led by the new chef, Madeline, and Joe. Tonight? PJ's Grill served 90 customers who love the food and, more importantly, are coming back because they've had a great time. The difference just with a decent chef in the kitchen doing his job that he's paid to do, what a weight off your shoulders. But the most important thing is I saw two owners who were passionate, happy and dealing with their business. What Chef Ramsay's done here is incredible. I don't really know how he knew how to go to the heart of Joe, but he did. It's just been unreal. It's like I just got a, a fire back, you know? I haven't felt that way in a long time. This is the first time 
and a lot of years, I feel my brother's looking down on me, you know? Look over my shoulder. You can do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. During my stay here, it's been dark, rainy, and gloomy. And I'm not just talking about the weather. But based on what I saw tonight in this restaurant, I seriously hope that tomorrow the sun shines on PJ's Grill and into the future, because it deserves it. After Chef Ramsay left, PJ's business did improve. But after a great deal of thought, Joe and Madeline made the most difficult business decision of their life. They decided to close PJ's Grill and return to the construction business.